tired. I'm more like totally exhilarated. Wouldn't it be great if we could be this happy forever? Hey, who says we can't, huh? Come here. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. <laughs> Maybe we need to uh, take these lethal weapons off first. <laughs> I know you're not smiling at that giant bone financial report. <laughs> no, how'd you guess? Look, Fox, mm -hmm. I'm glad you just realized you're head over heels in love with Kay, but... Head over heels is more like heart over deals right now, because I'm looking at all this stuff, and I, I gotta tell you, Valerie, I, I just, I don't feel like working right now, you know? If you don't prove yourself right now while your grandfather's out of commission, He's sure to fire you all over again when he recovers. Now, you may not care about your career here, but mine's extremely important to me. Okay. Okay, I hadn't thought of that. I guess I was being a little selfish. Fine. <clears throat> Listen, uh, maybe you could hold up the business end of this for maybe just a little bit longer because... I, no, I wouldn't ask you, but I, I got someone on their way over here. They're on their way over here right now. You know? Does it have to do with that private phone call you made earlier? Well, yes, Valerie, it does. As a matter of fact, it does. The person that's coming over here is going to make me the happiest person in the world. Please, don't let there be a shadow this time. Don't get your hopes up now, Kay. You know, we can't keep casting spells every time you get a twinge of insecurity. This might not work, so be prepared. Shoot, here it comes again. That stupid hand with the glove. Uh, Fox and I are doomed, aren't we? Uh, don't ask me. I don't have all the answers, you know. Oh, yeah. head down. Yeah, right. Head down. This could be only the shadow knows. Uh, <laughs> I've been wanting to say that for ages. <laughs> Okay, Dr. Russell, I'm ready. What's the good news and the bad news about Alistair? The only good news I want to hear is that Alistair has finally bought the farm. Okay, we're wasting time. Let's just wheel the old man out here so he can tell Ethan the truth. That it was Gwen and Rebecca who framed me for breaking faith with him. That they were the ones that sent the information to the tabloid revealing Ethan's true paternity. Ethan, it's time for you to learn the truth about your so-called loyal wife. not be this happy with my grandfather in the hospital on the brink of death. I don't think I'm gonna respond to that one. You're right. Talking about him could spoil our day, and I don't want that to happen. Hey, take my scarf. Right? No, I'm not cold. Well, why, are you still freaked out? Yeah, like someone's watching us. Well, you know it's not your grandfather. Can't you feel it? It's as if there are eyes on us right now. Look, look, whoever it is is trying to get away. Yeah, I'll get him. Come on. Valerie, what time is it? That is the fifth time you've asked me in so many minutes. Well, yeah, but who's counting, right? Sorry, I'm not trying to put a pin in your balloon. Well, you could have fooled me. I mean... It's just, I could really use your help here. Do you have any idea how many emails and phone calls we have to return before the end of the day? Really? Well, I'll get right on it. As soon as I do what I have to do, I'll get right on it. Oop, knock at the door. Hey, 
Thank you so much for uh, stopping by. You have no idea how important this is to me. Ah, on hand. It's my assistant, Valerie. Valerie, it's Mr. Cohen. What's going on? Oh, you'll see. I told you I was serious. The spell didn't work. Whoever's wearing that brown glove is gonna interrupt the ceremony again. No, no, wait a minute, not so fast. Oh. What do you mean? Oh my god, the shadow's fading. The, the, the brown glove is moving away. Fox and I will be married after all. Thank you, Tabitha. Oh, oh. oh wait a minute, dear. Oh, I'm, god. Going to, I'm going to let Endora play with Maria. I don't want her falling in there. Uh, I knew it. I knew I just had to have faith that Fox and I could survive it. Anything that comes our way. Oh, no, go away. That's no way to speak to me. No, no, the shadow, it came back. Where's that stupid hand with the brown glove? It's squeezing us to death. We're gonna die. Kay, are you all right? Oh, my God, what happened? What was all that? Well, it's not a good omen, I'll tell you that much. We're doomed. Fox and I are doomed. You know, I almost feel sorry for you, Gwen, because the second Ethan learns the truth, he's going to leave you. Because no man would stay married to a woman who betrayed him so callously. Teresa, leave her alone and have some decency, okay? You're asking me to have decency, Ethan, after everything your wife has done? You're gonna feel pretty lousy once you find out that I'm the one who's been telling you the truth all along. I don't want to hear another word about it, all right? I'm telling you the truth, Listen, Eva. listen, enough. I don't you want to hear what Eve has to say about my father's condition? Alistair is not going to be saying a word about anything to anybody. He can't. Um, what does that mean? Uh, why can't he talk? Don't you see? What, what she's trying to say is that Alistair can't talk because he's dead. No, she cannot get away with this. Gwen cannot get away with this! Wait for me! Fancy, look, I need you to stay there so I know you're safe, okay? Forget it. I want to see who's spying on us as much as you do. What? What is it? Why'd you stop? <laughs> Look who I was chasing. Gotcha! I can do that, Dad. Faster than the speed of light, son. You know, this time next year, I'm not gonna be able to catch up to you at all. Come on. I was so sure. Yeah, so sure you even had me believing someone was stalking us. I could have sworn there was someone there. Hey, look, it wasn't anyone, all right? Relax. And don't worry, you know? It's all right that you're a little upset. I mean, all hell has broken loose in the lives of everyone we know. I guess. Come on, let's go back to the rink. I'll buy you hot chocolate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. I told you I was working on something more important than business today. I brought over a sampling of what we have in the store. But if you don't see anything... Oh, no, 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 like... no, 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 I, I, they're, they're, they're great. I'm, I'm sure I can find, find something here. Valerie, what do you like? What... <laughs> I've never seen so many diamonds in one place in my whole life. Really? Well, okay, what do you think Kay would like? You know, it's gotta be something that shows her how much I love her and, and that I want her to be my wife. Uh, <laughs> let me go get my glasses. I didn't even know you wore glasses. Take all the time you like, sir. Thank you. Have you promised me that I'd be the one to end up with Fox? I should be picking up my own engagement ring, not Kay's. Tabitha, I thought everything would work out okay. Especially after Endora turned back time so that Fox would forget my stupid confession. Well, Endora saved your bacon once, but there's more than one bugaboo lurking about out there waiting to spoil your relationship with Fox. Like who? Well, I'd say whoever's wearing that brown glove is 
definitely a threat. I've warned you, Kay, everything in this life has a price. Especially when you ask too many damn favors from the dark side. Well, all I have ever wanted is just to protect my relationship with Fox. Excuse me? Oh, it wasn't that long ago that you were calling on them to help you win Miguel. It, it was thanks to them that you were able to get him to sleep with you and produce dear little Maria. Who I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. No, well, of course not. Everything in this life has a price, Kay. And you are well over your spell credit limit. From now on, you're gonna have to deal with the lumps and bumps like any other civilian. Tabitha, I, I will die. I will die if I lose Fox. A slow and painful death. Yes. Dear. <sighs> Maybe I should try reading my tarot cards and see if there's any hope at all of salvaging your relationship with Fox. And if the cards say there's hope? Well, then there's a 50-50 chance. Okay, well, let's do it. All right, dear. Yeah. But don't get your hopes up now. We'll try. I needed Alistair alive, just, you know, long enough to tell Ethan the truth about what Gwen and Rebecca did. Honey, she's completely delusional, okay? I would use another word for it, but never mind. I think we have to start planning the funeral. No, you don't understand. Alistair's not dead. Wait, if you just said... I said he's not going to be able to tell anyone anything. Well, why not? Because he suffered a stroke. You gotta be kidding. He's unable to say a word. So you see, Teresa, whatever secrets that Alistair has are gonna remain secrets indefinitely. You two looks like you were having fun out there. <laughs> oh, you were watching? Um, did you notice if anyone else was watching us, too? What do you mean? I don't know. I feel like I'm being stalked. You haven't seen anyone weird or strange? This is Harmony. We've got more than our share of the strange types around here. But no, I can't say I've noticed anyone. Thank you. I'm glad you don't think I'm being paranoid. <laughs> mm. Not at all. Look, with everything that's gone down in the last couple of days, you know, we'd be crazy not to be a little on edge. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hello? Fancy. Uh, your grandfather's had a stroke. Oh, my God. I I'm coming to the hospital. I want to see him. Well, there's really nothing you can do. He's, he's not even conscious. You could do more good if you were to show your face at Crane and try to boost morale in the design department. So that means everyone knows he's in serious condition. Yes, it's starting to panic. Apparently, some of the buyers are pulling their orders because they know that Alice is out of commission. I want you to reassure them that we will be conducting business as usual. But I've never acted as a boss. Well, you're my daughter, Fancy, and you're Alistair Crane's granddaughter. Crane Industries is in your blood. We all have to help out if we're going to keep the family business from going under. Are you with me? Um, yes. Yes, I'm with you. That's what Grampy would expect of me. He always said work comes before anything else. All right, well, you, you get over there as soon as you can. You, you calm the staff and you reassure the buyers. Okay, I'll take care of it, Daddy. Crane duty calls? My father needs me to help out at the office. Well, hey, at least we got a little alone time, right? I'll see you later. You bet. Mm -hmm. All right, maybe I'll go home and see if there's any news on Jess.
there been a change? Can Alistair talk? Honey, brain damage doesn't work that way. Brain damage? It's a primary cause of strokes. It's a problem with the supply of blood to the brain. Oh, y you know, I read that a stroke can cause total amnesia. That means that the person forgets everything they ever knew. Everything. You wish that would happen. Well, it can happen. Thankfully, it's very rare. Well, if he can't talk, I mean, can he, can he, can he write? Can he scribble answers to our questions? No, as of right now, Alistair can't communicate in any way. He can't speak. He can't write. He can't do anything. And, and that could be permanent? Well, I, I can't give you that prognosis. We're still assessing the extent of the damage. Well, how, uh, how soon will you know anything? Can't tell you that either. There's no timeline in cases like these. Well, this isn't fair. Teresa, why does everything have to be about you, huh? How are you holding on? Well, it's been a rough night and day. And you know I despise Alistair and what he's done to our lives and to my daughter's lives, but... Yet you've sworn to do everything in your power to save his life. And it really does take a toll. Well, perhaps there's an upside to all this. Please tell me. Now the father's incapacitated. Definitely, I'm the de facto head of Crane Industries. Right, I know. Perhaps I could try to right some of the wrongs that Alistair's perpetrated on everyone the company's done business with. I never thought of that. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I'll keep you updated. Do you still believe in fate, Teresa? Yes, I do. Hmm. So, what's it going to take for you to accept that fate has no intention of putting you and Ethan together? Because if it did, it would have happened by now. Thanks for your support, Mom. Yeah. Do you want false words of hope for me, Teresa? Or do you want your mother to tell you the truth? Sometimes I wonder. Okay, can we start? Have a seat, dear. What do they say? <laughs> Will you look at that? What? <laughs> oh, I'm smiling because I dealt myself a straight flush. One Romeo, one Merlin, one Isis, and a Juliet. <laughs> oh, I'm brilliant, if I do say so myself. Uh, brilliant enough to tell me if I have a future with Fox? <sighs> Don't you ever get tired of all your me, me, meing. It wasn't that long ago that you were panting over Hunky Miguel. If I remember rightly, you said, I'll never love another man the way I love him. Yeah, well, that was puppy love. I feel completely different about Fox. It's the real thing. It's different. You know, you young people don't realize how potent an anesthetic time can be. If you do lose Fox, it won't be long before you head over heels with another young man. And you'll be saying to me, Fox who? No, never, never. You have to help me get him back, please. <sighs> really? I wonder sometimes how you got along before you moved in with me. You know, there are some people in this world who have to solve their problems without any magic. Matt, what's going on here? Uh, come on, tell me what you think. I need a woman's take on this. What do you think? Ooh, will mine do? Oh, hey, 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 Fancy, what's up? Hi, uh, what's going on? Well, I should actually ask you the same question. What are you doing here? I haven't seen you around in weeks. Well, Daddy called me and asked me to act like a member of the family for once. Oh. He said you all needed some help around here. How could I say no? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you, you do it all the time. You say no all the time. I don't know. I'm not exactly known for my work ethic. In fact, Valerie's a little mad at me. She thinks I have my priorities kind of messed up, hmm. so. 
Well, I put out the fires in the design department. How can I help you in here? Well, actually, you are just in the nick of time to help me pick out an engagement ring. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, which one do you like? I mean, which, which one do you think Kay would like, you know? Oh, my God, I don't believe it. You're going to ask her to marry you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, which one do you think is, is absolutely perfect? It's got to be perfect for my future mm -hmm. bride. What do you think? Um, hmm. Neither. You can't give either one of those rings to Kay. You heard me. What are you two discussing magic for? Magic? <laughs> we were we were just joking about how Tabitha's advice to me, it always works like magic. Yeah, she has never, never once steered me in the wrong direction when it comes to my relationship with Fox. Or Maria, for that matter. Oh. <sighs> Old age ain't for sissies, but it does allow one to share one's experience. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, it sounded uh. like you guys were talking about the dark arts. <laughs> no. <laughs> You've been reading way too much Harry Potter. Uh, yeah, maybe so. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry I walked in without knocking. I, I wasn't thinking. Why, are you okay? Um, yeah. Well, yes and no. Fancy's freaking out a little today. Look, she thinks someone's been following us around. Yeah, well, we've all been under a lot of stress these past 24 hours. Yeah, you know, that's what I thought at first, too. You know, I thought she was just being edgy, but I don't know. I got the same sense at the skating rink, and then on my way over here, it, I got the feeling like someone was watching me the entire way. Oh, I'm sure it was just your imagination. <gasps> hey, maybe you could, um, take those cards to the kitchen and tell me what they say later. Will do. Okay. Uh, just gonna make a cup of tea. <laughs> I saw those tarot cards. You don't believe in that kind of stuff, do you? <laughs> Me? Practical common sense, Kay? Hardly. <laughs> uh, only basing my entire future on a magic bowl of water. Any news on Jess? Not that I've heard. Dad must be a rock, huh? Yeah, he's not the only one. Uh, it makes me sick to think about what that creep spike's done to our baby sister. I know. Yeah, you know, none of this would happen if Mom was still around. So, um, any news on Alistair? Uh, well, <laughs> oh, Alistair. Unfortunately, he's still alive. You know, he suffered a pretty major stroke, though. How major? Well, he can't move or even talk. So there's a chance he could still die? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think they know yet. Fancy's actually kind of broken up about it. Why? Even after everything she knows he's done to people? Yeah, but he's still her grandfather, you know? They were so close for so many years. I don't think she has it in her to hate him the way we do. Alistair's holding something pretty big over your head, isn't he? Yeah. Something you haven't told Fancy yet? Something I hope she never finds out from Alistair or me. Now, what about you, huh? I saw you at the mansion last night. It seemed like you had a pretty big secret of your own. Does Fox know? Mm-mm. Well, it looks like we're in the same boat, kid. Both of us have secrets that if they come out, well, we'll lose the people we love forever. You, you sure you don't mind taking care of those legal briefs for me? No, not at all. I'll, I'll run by the house. I'll pick up the documents before I head over to Crane. I appreciate that. With Father indisposed, we all have our work to do. Of course, the first thing he'll try to do, if he recovers, is to kick me downstairs as fast as he can. Well, Julian, in the meantime, I think I speak for everyone when I say it's much more rewarding working for you than for your father. I appreciate that. My goal is to try to accomplish as much as I can in the time that I have. I'm going to start by trying to reverse every unfair practice that Father's put into place over the years. And he's cheated uh, a lot of people. That might take a lifetime, you know. Yes, I know that. I'm ashamed to say I was right by his side for a great deal of it, but this is at least a, a small chance to try to right some of my wrongs. 
I do believe that fate wants Ethan and me to be together. It's just that bad things, evil things, keep getting in our way. Uh, just who are you calling evil, you homicidal husband snatcher? You're feeling pretty cocky, Rebecca, aren't you? Because of Alistair's stroke? I'm gonna tell you something, it's not gonna last forever. You and your two-faced, devious daughter will get your comeuppance the moment that Alistair wakes up, starts talking, or even writing again. Would you just go away? He's gonna nail you two to the wall so fast, your nasty little heads will spin. Ethan will learn the truth. Teresa, you know what? I don't know if I made myself clear, but stop attacking her, please. Thank you. I need to talk to you alone. Of course. Hang on while you can, Gwenny. It's not gonna last forever. Stop. Let's go get some coffee while we wait. <sighs> Look, um, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I thought I was gonna be able to stop her on her little tear. Sweetie, she's never gonna stop. Her life's goal is to torture me until I can't take it anymore. And frankly, at this point, I am so tired of this that I'm afraid she's actually going to succeed in splitting us up. Listen, it's not going to happen. It'll never happen. And what if I told you that I had a way to keep Teresa away from you for good? Do you really mean it? You have a way for me to be away from Teresa forever? Hallelujah! Ah, oh, the man has finally come to his senses. You know, I just happen to have the number of a very reputable hitman. Rebecca, please, listen. It occurred to me, now that Julian is running Crane Industries, I can ask for a transfer. Transfer to any Crane facility, anywhere in the world, anywhere in the country. Honey, that would be a dream come true. We could take Jane, we could move far away. You would honestly do something so drastic for me. I know how attached you are to Harmony, your mother, your father, they're Yes, here. yes, they are, but you, Gwen, are my family. And I'm not just doing this for you, I'm doing this for us. I am tired of Teresa's harassment. I am tired of her incessant badgering. And I owe it to you. It's not good for you, and it's not good for me. And frankly, I can't believe that she's still trying to accuse you of selling me out to the tabloids all those years ago. I, I mean, as if you're wife would do that to you, and, and much less keep it a secret all these years. Yes, Rebecca, that's right. I mean, I know you like I know myself, which is why I'm sick and tired of Teresa's unfounded allegations. I'm tired of them. And I can see what it's doing to you, honey, and I... I owe it to you to do everything I can to stop. When can we leave? I can talk to Julian later. Set the transfer up, and I'm sure he won't have a problem with it at all. You just pinch me? so I know I'm not dreaming. <laughs> you know, I never, ever thought I would ever be rid of Teresa. I have never loved you more than I love you right now. Oh, come <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about? I can't give either one of these rings to Kay. I thought you liked the idea of me proposing to her. Oh, I, I do. I love you, and I like Kay a lot. I just well, don't think either one of those rings are right for Kay. What are you... Did you see? Are you getting me? These are top quality, these are top of the line, right? That's top of the line. I know they're the most expensive, but not all women want the biggest diamonds money can buy. Says who? So you, you don't think she'd like these? It's not that she wouldn't be impressed, but there's more to an engagement ring than that. You want to buy Kay something that suits her, that shows you've given thought to her taste, her lifestyle, something that she would feel comfortable wearing on her finger. Now, ah. I don't mean that you can't buy Kay a beautiful ring, one that she'll love, just don't go overboard and buy her something she'll feel self-conscious wearing. Is this small enough? <laughs> it, what I'm saying is, it's not about the size. Ooh, like... Like this one. This is nice. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna, I'm not giving her that. I, I don't even, that does nothing for me, no. I'm not giving her that. Your sister has quite an eye. Even though these stones are smaller, they happen to be of extremely the highest quality. They're flawless. Hmm. Whatever. Ooh, this one. It's perfect. This one. You think she'll like it? If she doesn't, there's something wrong with her. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So, so this is it. This is, this is the ring that my... My future wife is going to wear for the rest of her life. 
Congratulations. Thanks. Well, when are you gonna pop the big question? Uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna go over to Tabitha's, you know, right now. Will you take a personal check? Of course, Mr. Crane. All right. All right. All right, this is it, I'm doing it. I'm gonna ask the woman that I love to marry me. Here we go. Oh dear. The very planets themselves are against this. Oh, how am I gonna break this decay? Brother Noah has problems of his own. He and Fancy are being stalked by tragedy. Literally. Oh, well, never mind that now. I've got to tell Kay what I've gleaned from the cards. No matter how bad it makes her feel. Sounds like Alistair has something on you that could blow you and Fox out of the water, huh? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk about my secret right now, okay? I'm more concerned about you. <laughs> Look, don't worry about me, okay? There's nothing getting thrown at your big brother that he can't handle. Uh, may I have a moment, dear? Alone, if your brother doesn't mind? No, of course, of course. Um, do you mind if I use the phone in the kitchen? I just want to call my dad. Oh, please be my guest. I just want to see if there's any news on Jessica. Oh, yes. Okay, so what did the card say? Did they show that there was a way that I could keep my relationship with Fox from being destroyed? As a matter of fact, they did. It's great. What do I have to do? Well, the key is what you can't do. It's what you have to prevent that will ensure your happily ever after relationship with Fox. Management couldn't believe it when I told them we're reopening all the factories in the Midwest. Thousands of people are going back to work. I'm very proud of you, Julian. And it's just the beginning of my, uh, my reparation plan. My father never gave a damn about the environment, so I'm, I'm starting a major cleanup plan that includes reforestering all the trees the crane cut down without a second thought. Well, let's just hope Alistair doesn't undo it when he recovers. <laughs> of course he will, as soon as he has the chance. I know it's not a very sun-like sentiment, but I, uh, I hope that what, what I'm beginning to do now might last. You mean? Father's death is the only way to ensure the crane industries does the right thing. So many people's lives would be changed with his demise for the better. And if he lives, everything and Everyone around him will suffer. He will just not rest until he's destroyed or harmed all the people that he can. You are really willing to leave Harmony? Yeah. You should know I would do anything for you. And you know, just this whole horror with Teresa has really beaten me down. And it has made me very insecure. Oh, honey, it's no wonder. I mean, she is like a dog with a bone when she's trying to take Ethan away from you. And all of that is going to stop once we're away from here. Look, you, you deserve to be happy. We deserve a life without Teresa's interference, period, no matter what it takes. Uh, that's the office. I got to take it. OK, I'll meet you out front. Okay. <clears throat> Did you hear that? All of our <laughs> problems are solved. He's gonna take me away from Harmony, away from Teresa. As long as Alistair doesn't recover before we leave, or better yet, if the stroke is fatal, I am home free. Teresa will never be able to hurt me ever again. Like smile she was flashing, she obviously thinks she is off the hook. She 
could be right. We don't know when or even if Alistair will regain his ability to speak or communicate in any way, Teresa. Oh, no, Mama, he's going to recover, and soon, if I know my monstrous husband, okay? It's going to take a lot more than a stab wound and a stroke to do him in. But even if he does die, Mama, all is not lost. I still know there's proof in existence that Gwen and Rebecca were the ones who sent the information to the tabloid, revealing Ethan's true paternity. Teresa, you don't know for sure if there's any proof. No, I do know, Mama. Alistair wouldn't have brought it up if he didn't have tangible evidence to blow those two right out of the water. And I will find that proof, if it comes to it. Either way, Mama, Gwen is going to lose Ethan, and I will wipe that cocky smile right off her devious face. OK, what do I have to prevent to ensure my future with Fox? You really want to know? Yes, I really want to know. Do you have to ask that? Tell me. All right, then. You have to turn Fox down should he propose marriage to you. What? That, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Since when is the dark side bound by the rules of human logic? The one stipulation is that you do not become engaged to Fox. Saying yes to his marriage proposal would sign your relationship's death warrant, do you understand? All right. OK, so. Don't look so nervous. Right. There is no way Kay won't accept your proposal. You're about to make her the happiest woman in the world. Yeah. <laughs> From your lips to God's ears. Okay. No matter how much I love Lauren, I have to live without him. Are you really going to stay with me? Yeah. I can't wait to see the look on Kay's face when I propose to her. If you become engaged to Fox, you're going to lose him forever. <laughs>